Hello friends, welcome to engineering tutorial. Uh, now in my previous uh, few videos, we discussed about the bias clipper circuits, uh, particularly the bias clipper circuits configuration 1 and 2. So we are going to take forward that discussion and we are going to discuss the bias clippers circuit configuration 3, the third type of circuit design which you can uh, come across in a bias clipper circuit okay so this is the uh, circuit diagram of the bias clipper circuit circuit configuration 3 okay so you can see there are almost the same things uh, which have been used in circuit configuration 1 and 2 of the bias clipper but there are two new things in the circuit configuration 3 in the third type of circuit configuration here there are two diodes which are connected in circuit configuration 1 and 2 of bias clippers there was only one diode but here there are two diodes d1 and d2 and as there are two diodes there are two reference voltages which are associated with each of the two diode D1 and D2 which are VR1 and VR2. So these are the two new sinks okay two diodes D1 and D2 are used instead of one and two reference or biasing voltages VR1 and VR2 DC voltages are used. And uh, another important specification to take care of is that the reference voltage VR1 is lesser than the reference voltage VR2 means this voltage is lesser in magnitude than this voltage. The remaining things are the same for the input signal voltage which we have taken a sinusoidal signal then we have the resistor R which is used to protect the diodes D1 and D2 from excessive voltage or current surges from the input signal then the load resistance across which the output is calculated. So in this circuit configuration 3, the third circuit configuration of bias clippers, the important and distinguishing factor is the two extra diodes D1 and D2 and hence two reference voltages VR1 and VR2. The remaining things are the same as that in circuit configuration 1 and 2. So I would uh, request you to please uh, check out uh, the bias clipper circuit configuration uh, 1 and 2, those two videos before going into this video so that you understand this video in a better way, okay. So this is the circuit diagram of the bias clipper circuit configuration 3. Again, the circuit analysis part like we did in circuit configuration 1 and 2. In circuit configuration 3, because of the two diodes D1 and D2, the circuit analysis will be done in three cases, in three situations. Because there are two reference voltages, there will be three cases or three conditions in which the circuit analysis or the circuit will be studied. Case 1, the input voltage is lesser than VR1. It means that the input voltage is lesser than VR1 and also lesser than VR2 because VR1 is lesser than VR2. So this is the first case in which the behavior of the circuit will be studied. Then case 2, VI is greater than VR2. The input signal voltage magnitude is greater than the second reference voltage. It means that by default it is greater than VR1. This is the second case. In the third case, this input signal voltage will lie in between VR1 and VR2. It means that it will be greater than VR1 but lesser than VR2 which is expressed here. VR1 is lesser than VI, lesser than VR2. Means VI is greater than VR1 but lesser than VR2. So these are the three cases in which we will divide the circuit analysis so that we understand the behavior of the circuit in a better way. And henceforth, it will be easy to determine the output voltage in each of the three cases. So this uh, this, this is how we are going to uh, demarcate the circuit analysis, and we'll study the circuit in each of the three cases. 
So this is the first case in which we will analyze this clipper circuit which we just discussed uh, previously. The first case is when the input voltage is lesser than this reference voltage VR1 which is connected to diode V1. Okay. So when we say the input voltage is lesser than VR1, it must also it, it also implies that this reference voltage is also lesser than VR2. As VR1 is lesser than VR2, we just uh, mentioned that. So when we say VI is lesser than VR1, it also means that it is also lesser than VR2. So we will discuss the behavior of diode D1 and D2 because of the input voltage which is lesser than VR1 capacity. First, look at this diode D1. Vi is lesser than Vr1. You can see this diode is connected with its n end upward and p end downwards. The n end is connected to Vi and the p end is connected to Vr1. It has been given that the input voltage is lesser than Vr1 or it also means that Vr1 is greater than Vi. It means that the p type end of the diode is connected to a higher magnitude potential and the end type end is connected to a lower magnitude electric potential okay now when a diode is connected in this fashion we say that the diode is forward biased so d1 will be forward biased and when a diode is forward biased it behaves as a short circuit okay so you can see in the equivalent circuit this diode d1 because it is forward biased it behaves as a short circuit Next, diode D2. See here, diode D2. We will discuss the behavior of diode separately. Diode D2 is connected with its P end upward and N end downward, opposite to D1. So the P end is connected to input signal voltage Vi and the N end is connected to Vr2. Now, I already uh, told you that when we say that the input voltage is lesser than Vr1, it also means that it is lesser than Vr2 because Vi is lesser than Vr1 and Vr1 is lesser than Vr2. So, we can say that the N type end, okay, the N type end is connected to a higher potential Vr2 while the P type end is connected to a lower potential Vr. Okay, so the P type end is connected to a lower potential, the N type end is connected to a higher potential. So, when a diode is connected in this way, the diode is reverse biased and when a diode is reverse biased it behaves as a open circuit so as you can see because of this in the equivalent circuit this diode d2 is open circuit because it is reverse biased so this is the equivalent circuit of the diode d1 is forward biased so it is short circuited d2 is reverse biased so it is open circuited so when these two terminals they become short circuited this voltage, reference voltage or biasing voltage Vr1, it appears across the load resistance Rl. Now, no, don't get confused why it is not Vr2 because it is open circuited, this voltage goes out of the circuit. It does not play any part now because it is open circuited. So, no current flows through this two terminals. Because it is short circuited, this, this diode D1, this entire voltage Vr1, it is in parallel across the load resistance RL. So the entire voltage VR1 now appears across the load resistance RL and we get the output D0 is equal to VR1, the DC reference voltage VR1. So in, when VI is lesser than VR1, the input signal voltage is lesser than the first reference voltage, we get the output equal to the first reference voltage equal to VR1 because of the circuit behavior in this way. Okay, so next we will discuss uh, the case 2 when Vi is greater than Vr2. Okay, so this is the second case in which we will analyze the circuit. Uh, in the first case, uh, we analyzed the circuit in the condition when the input voltage was lesser than Vr1. In case 2, we will analyze the circuit when the input voltage is greater than this reference voltage Vr2. 
Now, when I say that the input voltage is greater than the reference voltage Vr2, it implies that it is also greater than the reference voltage Vr1 because Vr1 is lesser than Vr2 in the circuit. So, again we will study the behavior of diodes D1 and D2 which governs the behavior of the entire circuit and the output voltage across low resistance R. So, we will discuss the behavior of the circuit uh, diodes D1 and D2 separately. So, consider diode D1, okay, Vi is greater than Vr1, okay, Vi is greater than Vr2, it means that the input voltage is greater than the reference voltage Vr1, okay. Now, the diode D1 has its N end connected to Vi and its P end connected to Vr1. Now, it is given that input voltage Vi is greater than Vr1. It means that the N end of the diode is connected to a higher potential Vr1 while its P end is connected to a lower potential Vr1. So, the diode in this case it will be reverse biased. Whenever a diode has its P end connected to a lower potential and the N end connected to a higher potential it will behave as reverse biased and a reverse biased diode acts as a open circuit. So, you can see in this case the diode D1 is reverse biased and behaves as an open circuit in the equivalent circuit here. Diode D1 is open circuited. Now, diode D2. The diode D2 has its P end connected to Vi, P end connected to Vi, N end connected to Vr2. Now, it is given that the input voltage is greater than Vr2. Okay, the input voltage is greater than Vr2 means the P end is connected to Vi and the N end is connected to Vr2. As the input voltage is greater than Vr2, so P end is connected to a higher electric potential, N end is connected to a lower electric potential. So, whenever we have a diode with its P end connected to a higher electric potential and the N end connected to a lower electric potential, that diode is forward biased the forward bias diode behaves as a short circuit. So, you can see in the equivalent circuit diode D2 because it is forward bias it behaves as a short circuit. Now, next thing is to determine the output voltage. Now, you can see as diode D1 is open circuited no current flows through this uh, circuit and Vr1 goes out of the question. We do not have to consider it anymore. But as this uh, do terminals they get short circuited, the entire voltage Vr2 now appears across the load resistance RL which we get as output. So, in this case the output voltage is equal to Vr2. In the previous case diode D1 was short circuited, D2 was open circuited. So, we got Vr1 as the output. In this case D1 is open circuited, D2 is short circuited. So, we got Vr2 as output. So, the conclusion is when the input voltage in a bias clipper circuit with two diodes and two reference voltages with Vi greater than Vr2, we will have the output voltage equals to Vr2. You do not need to remember this, but uh, just for concluding this whole discussion, I have written this. But whenever you get a circuit like this, you have to consider the behavior of the two diodes separately, determine whether the two diodes are forward bias or reverse bias. If it is forward bias, it will be short circuited. If it is reverse bias, it will be open circuited. And then you will determine the output voltage. You do not need to remember this. Do not, do not try to remember these results. It will get difficult. Try to understand the logic, how these two uh, diodes are operating, how the circuit is behaving and those things. And then try to conclude the results, the output voltage results. Okay. So now uh, we will discuss case 3 where the input voltage will lie in between the two reference voltages Vr1 and Vr2. That is Vi will be greater than Vr1 but lesser than Vr2. So, this is the third case in which we will analyze the circuit where the input signal voltage lies in between the reference voltages Vr and Vr2. That is Vr1 is lesser than Vi is lesser than Vr2. 
which means that the input voltage is greater than the reference voltage Vr1 but lesser than the reference voltage Vr2. So it lies in between these two reference voltages Vr1 and Vr2. So we will analyze the behavior of the two diodes D1 and D2 separately. First, the diode D1. So it has its N end connected to Vi and its P end connected to Vr1. Now Vi is greater than Vr1. So the N end of diode D1 is connected to a higher voltage Vi. The P end is connected to a lower voltage Vr1. So we know that a diode with its P end connected to a lower potential and N end connected to a higher potential is reverse biased and a reverse biased diode behaves as an open circuit. So diode D1 is open circuited in the equivalent circuit. This is the equivalent circuit of this circuit diagram, the behavior of the circuit. So diode D1 is reverse biased and behaves as an open circuit. Next diode D2. The diode D2 has its P end, the arrowhead P end connected to Vi and the N end connected to Vr2. The P end is connected to Vi and the N end connected to Vr2. It has been given that the input voltage is lesser than the reference voltage or the reference voltage Vr2 is greater than Vi. Vr2 is greater than Vi. Now this Vr2, the higher potential is connected to the N type end and the lower potential Vi is connected to the P type end. So again this diode with its P end connected to lower potential, N end connected to a higher potential, the diode D2 will also be reverse biased and it will also behave as an open circuit. So in this case, case 3, both diodes are open circuited because they are reverse biased. Okay, So this is a special case where both diodes are reverse biased, both are open circuited. See, diode D2 is also open circuited in the equivalent circuit. So when both diodes are open circuited, means these terminals are open, no current flows through them. We can now see that the resistor R, which was uh, not considered till now, is now in series with the load resistance R A, like uh, the cases in which we studied in the positive, negative, and bias clipper circuits one and two. Okay, so now the resistor R and R L are now in series. So whenever two resistors are connected in series across a voltage source, we can apply voltage division rule. So now we can apply voltage division rule to calculate the voltage across the load resistance, which is the output voltage. So it will be Vi into Rl by R plus Rl. Now this resistor value R is much lesser than the load resistance Rl. So it will be neglected in the denominator. So R plus Rl is nearly equal to Rl. RL RL gets cancelled out and we get the output voltage almost equal to the input voltage. So we will get the same signal as output that we apply in the input. It follows the input signal waveform. The output follows the input signal waveform. We will get the exact value as the output, same as the input voltage. So the conclusion is when the input voltage lies in between the two reference voltages Vr1 and Vr2, the output will be equal. To the input. So this is the conclusion for the third case where the input voltage lies in between the two reference voltages Vr1 and Vr2. Now we will try to plot the input and output waveform relationship of the bias clipper configuration circuit 3. So before we do that let us uh, just have a look at the conclusions that we have drawn from the three circuit cases. In the first case when the input voltage was lesser than the reference voltage Vr1 and also lesser than Vr2, we got the output as Vr1. When the input voltage was greater than uh, Vr2 or the reference voltage 2, we got the output as equal to Vr2. And when the input voltage was in between the two reference voltages Vr1 and Vr2, we got the output equal to the input. So these are the three conclusions of 
the flipper circuit configuration 3 bias 2 so this is the input signal a normal sinusoidal signal with positive and negative half cycles the two important things are the two dc voltage points reference voltage points pr1 and pr2 now pay attention the signal range from o to a it lies below the reference voltage vr1 so it will signify case 1 where input voltage is lesser than vr1 from o to a again a to b will signify case 3 where the input voltage lies in between vr1 and vr2 so in this range from a to b this region a b the input voltage is actually lying in between vr1 and vr2 it is greater than vr1 but lesser than vr2 above point b from point b to c okay from point b to c the reference for the input signal voltage is uh, greater than vr2 okay so the region bc it signifies case 2 where the input signal is greater than vr2 again cd signifies case 3 where the input voltage again falls in between vr1 and vr2 and again below b the input voltage falls below vr1 so it is lesser than vr1 so for the region oa okay oa and below d these are the same oa and below d where the input signal is lesser than vr1 oa and d okay oa and d where input voltage is lesser than vr1 the output is equal to vr1 so here if we trace the output for region oa and below d we get the output is equal to a constant line vr1 and here also vr1 this is for the region o to a okay for o to a output is vr1 below d it is vr1 output now for the re region a to b where the input signal is in between vr1 and vr2 so when the input signal is in between vr1 and vr2 the output is equal to the input so the output signal waveform will be the same as that of the input signal waveform so for the region a to b okay a b and c d both regions are the same where the input signal lies in between vr1 and vr2 in a b and c d okay a b and c d the input signal v i lies in between vr1 and vr2 so when the input signal lies in between vr1 and vr2 the output follows the input signal waveform so you can see the output is following the input for a b if we trace follows the output follows the input here also the output follows the input next uh, for the region bc okay bc in the region bc the input signal is greater than the reference voltage vr2 okay so it's, this signifies case 2 so when input signal is greater than vr2 output is equal to vr2 so in this region BC, the input signal lies above the DC voltage VR2, okay? It lies above the DC voltage VR2 in region B to C, it is above VR2. So in this case, the output voltage will be equal to constant voltage VR2, okay? This, so in this region B to C, if we trace the output, the output will be equal to VR2, constant voltage VR2. So this is how the output voltage we get for the flipper circuit configuration 3 now again you if you pay attention the changes have been made only in the positive half cycle the bottom portion this portion is clipped this portion the top end uh, towards the top end has also been clipped it is not there and the entire negative half cycle has been clipped it has been removed it is absent from the output so again this is also a positive bias clipper circuit why because changes have happened only in the positive half cycle bits and pieces changes have happened only in the positive half cycle the negative half cycle is entirely absent so in a positive bias clipper circuit the negative half cycle can either be completely present or completely absent 
only bits and pieces changes will happen in the positive half circle here also the top portion is clipped the bottom portion is clipped and the negative half circle is completely clipped so it is a output of a positive bias clipper so this clipper circuit configuration 3 which we discussed it is a positive bias clipper so i hope you like this video and uh, please uh, if you have any doubt you can write it in the comment section and uh, if you like this video then please hit the like button and subscribe my channel engineering tutorial for more such videos related to electrical electronics instrumentation and communication engineering have a great day thank you